steps that the left in America will take in order to blind, besmirch, destroy the reputation of Judge Kavanaugh and also his family that you saw tonight. It's a story as old as time. For decades, every single solitary nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court by a Republican president has been met with the same destructive tactics from the Democratic Party. Now, regardless of who was nominated, regardless of what their qualifications, regardless of their track record, even an adherence to the U.S. Constitution, the foundation of our laws in this, of course, republic that we live in, a constitutional republic, you have the left, you have Democrats and their friends in the media, that their echo chamber, always conducting what is a malicious campaign to impugn the character of good people, the track record of good people, frankly, anybody that President Trump would have nominated to the Supreme Court. The language gets downright apocalyptic, and this time is no different. Let's just go back. Let's take a look at how the left was treating President Trump's nomination before the announcement tonight. It is really bordering on insanity. Watch this. You just have to remember how extensive the conservative agenda is here for for the Supreme Court. It's not just rolling back abortion rights. It's not just rolling back gay rights. It's not just eliminating um, uh, affirmative action. It's not just expanding the death penalty. I've never recall a previous president outsourcing at least the initial selection process to an outside right. interest group the way that this president has to the Federalist Society. A woman's freedom to make sensitive health care decisions hang in the balance with this nominee. It is near impossible to imagine that President Trump would select a nominee who isn't hostile to our health care law and health care for millions and millions and millions of Americans who is in hostile to a woman's freedom to make her own health care decisions. For the president, it's going to be all about the personal connection, who he feels comfortable with in the moment. So you're and saying he's going to pick the man, um, the, the white man. So as R.E.M. once put it, the end of the world as we know it. I've never seen a president of the United States, in effect, make himself a puppet of outside groups and choose from a group of right-wing fringe ideologues. I frankly don't even think we should be considering this nominee. Now, none of this rhetoric is surprising at all. None of it's new. One of the most notable smear campaigns from the Democrats took place in the 1980s during Ronald Reagan's nomination of an originalist, an intellectual, to the Supreme Court. His name was Judge Robert Bork. And by the way, he was never confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court in large part because of what was lying and fear mongering and just frankly smearing by people like Senator Ted Chappaquiddick Kennedy. You may remember this. Take a look. Robert Bork's America is a land in which women would be forced into back alley abortions, blacks would sit at segregated lunch counters, rogue police could break down citizens' doors in midnight raids, and school children could not be taught about evolution. Writers and artists would be censured at the whim of government. What the Democrats did to Judge Robert Bork was so egregious that it inspired a new term called Borking. And years later, Borking was in full play during the confirmation hearings of now Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. By the way, I think one of the best justices we've ever had on the court in our lifetime. Back in 1991, Democrats rolled out a former colleague, Anita Hill, to make allegations against him. And it became so nasty that Justice Thomas called it a, quote, high-tech lynching. Watch this. This is a circus. It's a national disgrace. And from my standpoint, as a black American, as far as I'm concerned, it is a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves, to do for themselves, to have different ideas. And it is a message that unless you kowtow to an old order, this is what will happen to you. You will be lynched, destroyed, caricatured by a committee of the U.S. U.S. Senate rather than hung from a tree. It's already begun right now by Democrats to Judge Kavanaugh and to his family as we speak that it didn't matter who the president would have picked. And by the way, if you ever want to read a fantastic book, 
my grandfather's son. It was written by Justice Thomas. Amazing book, an amazing family, an amazing life story. And as we speak, you have this all-out effort to bork Judge Kavanaugh. It's in full swing. Most Democrats will never accept that they lost the election and that President Trump is appointing somebody who believes in fidelity to the Constitution, that believes in separation of powers, that interprets U.S. law based on the clear and written intent of our founders and the clear and written law as written by a separate branch of government. In other words, the legislative branch and values inalienable rights in our Constitution above all else. Someone that believes in these very important constitutional principles, separation of powers, co-equal branches of government. Instead, the left, what do they want? They prefer Hillary's choices, judicial activists, people that will legislate from the bench, people that would even go as far as not, not rely on the Constitution, but even use international law to justify their activist decisions, superseding our own Constitution. Activist justices often creating law instead of interpreting the law, interpreting the Constitution. And given their Democratic friends, well, perfect cover for having to vote on many controversial left-wing issues that they would never get at the ballot box or legislatively. Now, because Judge Kavanaugh is not Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg or Justice Sotomayor, get ready, hold tight, buckle up. Democrats are about to tell you as they have been saying for 12 days now, the sky is going to fall. The world as you know it is going to end. And they want you to believe. They will lie to you. They want you to believe Judge Kavanaugh is going to lead, okay, just like Republicans, the dirty air, dirty water, the rise of, let's see, racism, sexism, misogynism, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, that America will cease to exist as we know it. Now, my advice to the American people, they are going to lie to you. That's what they do. You have to listen to your own heart and mind, do your own research. We will be presenting as much information as we can on this program. The Democrats are trying to lie for political gain. And as always, an originalist, a constitutionalist, an appointment such as this to the Supreme Court strengthens the foundation of this country, the original intent of our founders and of our framers. The world is not coming to an end just as it did not come to an end after the successful appointment of Clarence Thomas, Sam Alito, or Neil Gorsuch. We will have much more analysis coming up in the show. Now let's turn to the deep state. I want to tell you about two breaking stories that will blow your mind. Trump hating former FBI lawyer Lisa Page has officially been subpoenaed. She is going to appear before a closed door congressional hearing this Wednesday. And by the way, after days of legal hedging, Lisa Page's one time boyfriend, the disgraced Trump hating FBI agent Peter Strzok, he will testify. You will get to see it before the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees. That will be live right here on Fox this Thursday. It will be public. It will be explosive. And of course, Strzok is the high ranking agent at the heart of this effort to clear Hillary Clinton of all charges, all while opening up a subsequent witch hunt into Donald Trump and so-called Trump-Russia collusion. So now this Thursday, also struck will be forced to answer for his extreme bias and more importantly, be forced to answer questions about the culture of the FBI and what role political prejudice played in the FBI's decisions in 2016 and beyond. By the way, one other note. The show is hitting the road later this week to cover all the breaking developments with the president's trip to Brussels and London and then, of course, Helsinki and, of course, the important negotiations with NATO and meeting Vladimir Putin. We'll get to all of that. But joining us first, we want to check in. He is the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. He's also the counsel to the president and one great attorney that I know from personal experience. Jay Sekulow is with us, sir. All right. First of all, I, I, I want to sure. read you something very quick, and I don't want to take your time. We have very little time. The president yep. and his appointee took our time. But I want to read this to you. This was in 2006. This is by uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And he actually said this, and I think it goes to the heart of judicial philosophy. And he said it was a, a conference at George Mason Law School. He said, what well, Justice Scalia, what did he stand for as a judge? It's not complicated, but it's profound and worth repeating. 
The judge's job is to interpret the law, not to make the law or make policy. Read the words of the statute as written. Read the text of the Constitution as written, mindful of history and tradition. Don't make up new constitutional rights that are not in the text of the Constitution. Don't shy away from enforcing constitutional rights that are in the text of the Constitution. <laughs> changing the Constitution is for an amendment process. And changing, by the way, policy with in constitutional bounds is for the legislative branch. Remember that the structure of the Constitution, separation of powers and federalism are not mere matters of eti etiquette and architecture, but are at least as essential to protecting individual liberty as the individual rights guaranteed in that text. And remember that courts have a crucial, critical role when a party has standing in enforcing those separation of powers and federalism limits. Simple but profound. And then he went on to talk about the 10 principles. Um, uh, as he says, separation of powers system is to be an umpire as a judge means to follow the law, not remake the law and to be impartial in how we go about doing that. A good umpire should not be making up the strike zone as he or she goes along. Judges likewise should not make up the rules as they go along. We see this in statutory interpretation. A good judge sticks to the established text and canons of construction that help guide us in interpreting ambiguous text and he talked about Scalia's view of that your reaction well look Brett Kavanaugh is a brilliant lawyer judge Kavanaugh is has been and continues to be a brilliant judge and he's going to be Justice Kavanaugh a brilliant justice of the Supreme Court I have had the privilege of litigating cases before the Supreme Court for three decades including from the time that Anthony Kennedy uh, was on the bench until his retirement and I've known Brett Kavanaugh both in a private practice on cases and as a judge and the president has just nominated not only a well-qualified and brilliant jurist, but someone, as you just said, Sean, that understands the role of the judge, and that's critical. If you understand the Constitution, you understand the three branches of government, but you also understand the role of the judge. Brett Kavanaugh has lived that out in his life, both in his practice and as a judge, and he will be an excellent addition to the Supreme Court. And Sean, you heard it tonight uh, in his, his uh, brief statements that uh, Brett made. The fact of the matter is uh, they're going to come after him because that's what they do. It's not going to lay a glove on him. This is a guy that has been ready for this moment for a long time. He's not only well-trained, not only brilliant. But he's also someone that understands, as I said, his role as a textualist, as what the Constitution requires of a judge. He's going to call them as he sees them. He's not going to come in with preconceived notions, but he also has had 300 opinions. He's heard a lot of cases and made a lot of decisions. So I'm very optimistic and very pleased with this selection. A lot of times conservatives that I know most worry. It seems that when Democratic presidents never make a mistake. They always get the judicial activists that they want. But there have been choices by Republican presidents that because no no nominee will ever talk about specific cases that may come before the court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg that, right. famously said that. So yeah, I, right. I ask you your confidence in him in, in what I read to you about originalism, constitutionalism, separation of powers, co-equal branches. How confident on a scale of one to 100 are you that this is his real judicial philosophy. Look, I, I just said I've known Brett for, for 17, 18 years, almost 20 years now, and I know his judicial philosophy. Uh, look, any judge is not going to, if they're doing their job correctly, will not prejudge the outcome of a case that is likely to come before them. And Judge Justice Ginsburg was right when she said that you shouldn't be answering those questions. What you want to know from a nominee is where they stand on their view of the Constitution and their role as judge. And Brett Kavanaugh understands exactly the role that he has under Article Three of the United States Constitution. As I've said, you know, I think it was Justice Scalia famously said, a good judge will sometimes come to a conclusion that although he disagrees with the result, but understands the implication and that he's required to follow the law, even if he would rather see it go a different way. Hey, What's Jay. the role of the judge? Follow the law. He actually added to that what the law demands, regardless of his own personal yes. view. That is a powerful statement right. by Judge Scalia. Yes. Uh, all right, yeah. Jay Sekulow, uh, great to see you. Appreciate you being with Thanks, us.